Okay, hello everyone. So in that break between the uh, videos there, I went ahead and what I did was I went 93, take 1.2, got that answer, took 1.2 from that answer, and just filled along my axis there. Pretty simple arithmetic, nice and easy. You could do it by hand if you wanted to, but uh, doesn't really matter. Okay, so now what we can go on with is we can look at comparing these two distributions and working out which company rejects the uh, most amount of tuna, or in the other case, the most amount of uh, soup. Okay, so we know that the Z score for what is rejected is negative two and a half there, so I'm just going to shade that onto our axis as per the last part of the uh, question in the last video. And uh, we know that that is what is rejected. Okay, so now it says which company rejects the larger proportion of cans. And hence, if both companies make the same amount of cans, determine which company throws out the greater number. Okay, so let's say they both made 5,000 cans, for example. And uh, we know their Z scores, so I'll just clear a bit of space here. Uh, and based on this, we know that Soup has a z-score of less than two and two-thirds, then it will be rejected. And we know that tuna is a z-score of less than two and a half to be rejected. So when we put this into the bigger picture, which one has a larger proportion? Well, no, should both be negative, just to clarify that. But uh, because these are both negative, we can see that the greater number will be actually be in the tuna cans. Now the reason this is, is because uh, if we look at it here, and it probably isn't the best because it isn't scaled, but uh, because this number is actually closer to the mean than that number, assuming that the mean is zero, zero z-score, then uh, you know because that's closer, there must be a greater proportion that are thrown out. And you can just think about it in terms of, okay, what if one was one and the other was two? Then you could also see that there would be a difference in the proportion. And it's just because the proportions are so close together that there's not much of a difference. It may be harder to get. But again, think about these numbers relative to zero, how close they are to the mean. And of course, remember that the scale is obviously going to be the same. There's going to be three plus standard deviations. And then from that, you can work out who rejects the more tu uh, most tuna. Or soup. So in this case, tuna is more heavily rejected than soup is, because if they both made 5,000 cans, then uh, tuna would throw out more because it has a z-score that is closer to the mean. Okay, so now that we've looked at that, we're going to move on to another comparison. So not only can you compare uh, test scores or things like that, you can also compare Things like, uh, well, sorry, I, I just said test scores there when that's what we're actually moving on to. Uh, so instead of comparing soup and tuna scores, uh, I sort of should have mentioned spoiler alert there, but uh, we can also compare test scores and see how well people did on a test or an English essay. So let's say that Bill here was uh, did both the English and the maths test, and he wanted to know whether he did better on the maths test or the English test compared to the rest of his friends. So of course percentage helps, but sometimes the percentage isn't a true indicator. Because if everyone does terribly on a test, then, uh, and you did, you know, 70% or something, then uh, maybe you're in the top percentage of the class. So that's where z-scores are very helpful, because they show you how far away from average you are, or how close to average you are. And again, it shows you what scores are better. So we have just me quickly writing up that there, and we have the one at the top here. So uh, let's see how Bill went on his maths and his English essay, shall we? Okay, so Bill did both the maths test and English essay, as I said before, and on the maths test, he got a score of 39 marks. The mean for his class was 34. So the mean for the maths test was 34 marks. Bill got 39. So he's obviously greater than average, that's good. 
uh, and the standard deviation for the maths test marks were 2.5. So, on his English essay, he scored 17 marks. So Bill got 17 marks here. And the average for his class was 14. And there was a standard deviation of 2. So obviously, they're graded differently. They obviously have a different number of marks, so we can't directly compare and say, okay, got 14 on that, he got 30, uh, 39 on that, then, um, or should I say 17 and 39, sorry, then uh, you can't just compare it directly that way. You can compare it using percentages, which is what we're going to do in a moment. But another crucial piece of information that may help us is uh, what the tests were actually out of. The maths test was out of a total of 48 marks. So you got 39 out of 48. And uh, the English essay was out of 22 marks. So he got 17 marks out of 22. Okay, so the first question asks, what are his percentages for both the tests? Okay, so percentages. Let's go and see. Bill got 39 out of 48 for his maths test. So let's have a look at his maths test percentage. Again, we just simply go to our calculator. 39 divided by 48 is 81%. So, he did okay-ish. And uh, if we have a look at the other one, where Bill did his English essay, it's 17 out of 22. And that's 77%. So again, he did kind of okay, I guess. So now, we need to calculate his C-scores and work out whether he did better on his English essay or his maths test. So let's just keep these percentages aside. So uh, the one up the top here is maths, and the one down the bottom here is English. And uh, we'll keep his percentages. So maths, you got 81. English, you got 77. Now we can calculate the Z-score. I'll just erase this information from the board, but I've got it kept here on the sheet, so I'll uh, make sure I use that there. So the Z-score for maths, if we do it up here, Z is equal to, and he scored 39 marks, and the mean was 34, and his standard deviation was 2.5. For this one, the Z-score for the English test, 22 marks was the score, so that's not relevant in this case. Four, 17 he got, 14 was the average, and the standard deviation was 2. Okay. So now we can plug these into our calculator and get a z-score for his maths test. So we go alpha, y equals, down to 2. Got a fraction bar there. Then we go 39, take 34, divide by 2.5. And that gives us a standard deviation of 2. So obviously, uh, if we look at it, 2.5 plus 2.5 is 5, and the difference between those is 5. So his z-score is simply 2. He is sitting two standard deviations away from the mean. So he is sitting there relative to the rest of his classmates with a score of 39, score of 34 for the mean, and, of course, in between, it's going to be 36.5. Okay, so now let's see how he went on his English test. So, again, alpha y equals, scroll down to number 2, and uh, then what we do is we go 17, take 14, divide by 2, and we get an answer of 3 on 2. So, his z-score for this is 3 on 2. And 3 on 2 is equal to 1 and a half. So now it asks, did he do better on the maths test or the English essay? So in this particular example, his maths test, he got 81% and he got a z-score of 2. His English essay, he got, 70, uh, uh, he got 17 marks, which is 77%, and he got a z-score of 3 over 2. 
In this case, the one with the higher percentage actually has a higher z-score. However, it may not always be like that. So that's where z-scores are really helpful, because perhaps everyone really bombed on the English essay, and he may have got 77%. He might have been the top of the class. But uh, again, in this particular example, the one that does have the higher percentage does have the higher z-score, and, you know, that happens quite a lot. So, uh, as you can see here, because there's two standard deviations away, and because this is 1.5 standard deviations, is closer to the average on this one here than he is on that one there. So, the shaded area are the people who did better than him, and more people did better than him on the English essay than uh, in his maths class, where less people did better than him compared to the number of people who did better than him on the English essay. So he did better on the maths. Okay, and that's a really good application of z-scores, because as I said before, it can give you an indicator of the level you're sitting at. So the last question asks us to draw a scaled set of a normal distribution to show this. So I don't actually have a ruler here, so I'm just going to put in the numbers. So let's work this out, and uh, got it here. We shaded the regions are important, which are the people who did better than him, and where he's sitting. And uh, obviously 34 take 2.5, that's going to be 31.5. Yep. And then this one here, it's two standard deviations away, and then we're going to have three standard deviations away to the left. So this one here, we take 2.5 from that, we're going to get 29 marks. And then if we take another 2.5 off of that, we're going to get 26.5 marks. And on the other end, if we add uh, 2.5 marks there, we're of course going to get 41.5. And then we could do the same for the bottom. Uh, it was 14 and a standard deviation of 2, so that's nice and simple. Uh, simple sorry. So we've got 16 there. We've got 18 at 2 standard deviations away. We've got 20 at 3 standard deviations away. And then we got here, mu take 1 standard deviation, we've got 12. Mu take two standard deviations, we got ten, and mu take three standard deviations, we got eight marks. So there we have it. There's a look at z scores and the normal distribution, how we can compare different values using z scores and reach conclusions on who did better at something, uh, or where you sit relative to your classmates. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, again, the question section is below. I also will have some questions in the uh, comment, in the actual description area, uh, which you can have a go at with z-scores as well. So uh, if you're interested in trying a few more, I'll have them there uh, for you to have a play around with. But uh, yes, thank you very much for watching, and uh, hopefully this helped. See you later.